But first, how last year's election results shook up one West Virginia town and how the reverberation continue to sow division. Hari Srinivasan has more on that. Buckhannon is a town with a population of less than 6,000. It's a deeply conservative place with a long history tied to coal. Its mayor calls it the most Trumpian place in America. But Buckhannon is also where a growing group of women are finding their voice through protest. And we're speaking up has angered some people, including the men in their lives. Our Elizabeth Flock just published a deep look at these divisions and the women on the front lines. It sounds like a tough climate to protest Trump. Absolutely. I think it's very isolating for a lot of the women in the town. There are just about 70 women in a town of 6,000, um, and most of the town does not agree with them. And so how does the town respond when they see these women picketing policies of the Trump administration? Um, not well. They've gotten a lot of pushback from the town, um, from everyone from the local fraternity brothers at the nearby college to their husbands, to their neighbors, um, to people at the high school. Um, some of their kids have been made fun of for the women protesting. Um, other women go home at night and their husbands get after them for appearing on the front page with a protest sign. Um, so for them, I, I think it's a constant struggle to keep protesting in light of the reaction that they're getting. And as you point out, a lot of these women were not engaged in this way before this election. Absolutely not. Most of them told me the only political participation that they'd had up until this point was voting. Um, most of them had never held a protest sign. This is very new to them. I think what's interesting is this wasn't an organized thing. A lot of these women just decided individually that after the election they wanted to do something. They wanted to go out and protest. They went to the county, in front of the county courthouse and held a sign and they found that there were other women there doing the same thing. Hmm. And, and as you point out, uh, their protests are met with counter protests. What's that like? Um, well, the most striking example was after the announcement of the proposed travel ban when the women did a march at the county courthouse and a number of trucks showed up as in counter protest, um, mostly men, uh, members of the local fraternity from the nearby college um, and other locals and basically spewed smoke at the women as they were marching. They were involved in a huge cloud of black smoke, dropped firecrackers. Um, it was a scary scene in which a lot of the women tried not to run or scream and give the men the reaction that they wanted. So what are, these, what are the actions that these women are taking that they hope have long-term consequences? Um, so obviously showing up in the streets with, with posters and sort of telling the town of Buckhannon that we're here and not everyone agrees with you. Um, they're lobbying local representatives. One of the women held a town hall um, with uh, the Republican, for the Republican senator who did not show up. So she held the town hall anyways to an empty chair. Um, and a lot of them are traveling to meet with other, they're part of an indivisible group and they're traveling to meet other indivisible groups, which is a liberal mm -hmm. anti-Trump grassroots organization. And so they're sort of um, connecting the dots um, with other grassroots progressive organizations that are fighting against Trump's policies around the country. And, and speaking of around the country, is this a microcosm of something that's happening elsewhere? I do think this is, uh, Buckhannon is, it's one small town where this is happening, but it, there are a lot of indications that there are women who are doing this across the country. I mean, 11,000 women are considering running for office for the first time, according to Emily's list, after Trump's uh, election. Um, obviously, the Women's March was a huge show of interest by women in participating. And um, the indivisible groups that have been spreading across the country, I think there's 6,000 of them now. And after the story came out, um, a lot of women from rural areas wrote and said that this really resonated with me and this is what's going on in our, in our town as well, in Pennsylvania and Ohio, mm -hmm. across Appalachia, um, and basically said, we're also protesting. It's really hard for us here. It's really isolating because right. people don't agree with us and we're doing it anyways. Plenty to follow up on. Liz Flock, thanks for joining us. Thank you.